Hi everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda Pauley and I am Deputy Editor at Professional Beauty. Um, today's webinar is going to be a shared one across all of our publications, so Professional Beauty, Hairdressers Journal and um, PB and HJ Island. Um, so today our webinar is going to be about ways to market your salon business that aren't social media and this is going to be with Ryan Power. Um, he's a PB webinar star before, and he's also the founder of beauty coaching brand Salonology. So he's going to be talking about all the ways that you can actually market your business that aren't um, just around using Instagram and Facebook. And he's kind of going to be covering the do's and don'ts of getting this type of marketing right. Um, he's going to do a 30 minute presentation. And then at the end, we will have time for a Q&A with the audience. So if at any time when you're watching this, you have a question for Ryan, pop it in the comment box on Facebook or in Zoom, and we will get them to, uh, across to him at the end. But Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me on, Amanda. It's great to be back. Yeah, it's lovely to have you back. So you know the drill. I'm going to turn my camera and my mic off. I'm going to let you do your thing. And then I'm going to come back at the end um, to post some questions to you that the audience have. But um, best You're of luck, Ryan. And thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here today. I know that your time is precious to you as busy entrepreneurs, and therefore I will be respectful of that. And I'm going to try and cram as much goodness into this as we possibly can today. Hopefully you are able to see my uh, screen there without any problems. Um, and what we are actually going to look at today, we're going to go through three ways to promote yourself and your business, which are not social media okay not social media that's spoken about elsewhere isn't it almost to death right uh, everyone's talking about growing your insta growing your facebook followings growing your tiktok right so let's talk about some things which are nothing to do with that some good old-fashioned old school marketing which i hope will really really help you okay um so Let's get started. Um, thank you, um, Amanda, for that lovely introduction. And thank you for both to Professional Beauty and to Hairdresser Journal and Hairdresser Journal Ireland for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Um, I am Ryan Power. I'm a beauty business coach, author, speaker, all round marketing geek. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, uh, this is the mercifully short uh, introduction to me, right? Just so you kind of know where, uh, where it's at. As I say, I'm a beauty business um, speaker, love talking about anything to grow your salons. That is what our business, Salonology, which I run with my wife, Holly, that's what it's all about. Um, I'm also uh, a best-selling uh, Amazon number one best-selling author. Hopefully some of you have grabbed my book. Uh, this is our community. It's called Salonology Superstars. Hopefully plenty of you are already in there as well. It'd be great to hear from you in the comments if you're with me. Um, and we were delighted and privileged to uh, this year win the Family Business Entrepreneur of the, War, uh, of the Year Awards uh, at the Great British Entrepreneur Awards, which was uh, over 2,000. 700 uh, businesses entered that so we were dead chuffed about that but first and foremost and almost more importantly than all of that uh, we're also beauty business owners just like you right uh, we had a salon too this is the image you see here this is the day spa and salon that my wife holly and i owned and owned for over a decade before we sold it earlier this year so what i'm going to share with you today it's not like some textbook marketing rhetoric that's never been tested. I only ever share stuff that we've done in our business and that our coaching clients have done as well, right? So as I say, now Holly and I, we've sold the salon and we just purely uh, have got our coaching community, Salonology, where we've got over 300 members um, in our coaching community. Um, so Let's have a look then. That's, as I say, that was the mercifully short introduction. Uh, you're not going to hear me going about that anymore. But now I want to give you three ways to promote yourself. As I said, they're not social media, right? Clue, none of them are going to be Instagram. You're not going to hear me mention TikTok again. Um, and that's not to say that anything is wrong with social media. Okay, I'm not saying don't do social media, just to be clear. Uh, social media is very, very important, of course, but it's not the only way. Okay, and again, I sometimes see this when I'm talking to salon owners, it's as if, you know, marketing didn't exist before social media, right? Marketing was around a long time, 
before Facebook, guys, right? You know, in the in the 90s and the 80s, people still promoted their businesses, okay? They just did it in a slightly different way. Well, actually, the way they did it wasn't even different. It was the vehicle, the vehicle by which you do the advertising or promotion, which has changed. Because that is all that Facebook is. That is all that Instagram is, is a vehicle for getting your message in front of your people, okay? Um, and actually, what I'm gonna talk about today, and I'll touch on this later, much of what we're gonna talk about works well in conjunction with social media. It's actually when you start layering things on top of each other, that that is where the real uh, benefits uh, lay. And also, the other real benefit to what we're gonna talk about today is gonna be that your uh, competition are not gonna be doing this, right? Most businesses now, they market themselves on social media and do very little outside of that. It's like socials are the be all and end all for some businesses. And I promise you, there's another way, okay? And it's gonna make you stand out from the crowd um, and it is gonna help to engage your audience in a different way, right? Now, before we get into that good stuff, I just wanna kind of uh, uh, lay this foundation, if you like, this is gonna encapsulate everything that I'm going to be talking about today and moreover it's also going to encapsulate as well uh, really everything that we talk about when we're talking about marketing and this is like marketing 101 okay it's back to school time and I just want to remind you or if you've never heard of it tell you about uh, what we call the three M's of marketing right this is like the godfather of marketing come out this is this is I don't have any credit for this okay but everything that you do when you look to put out a marketing message to your people, okay, must be in this order. And this is really important, okay? First and foremost, you've got to think about the market, right? Who is it that you are trying to get your message in front of, okay? That is like your dream target client. Who is it that you want to see your messaging, right? Only after you've worked that out, do you then think about the message, okay? So, right, who am I trying to contact? Right, I'm trying to contact, uh, I'm trying to get in front of 50-year-old uh, ladies who uh, like to lunch, right? And uh, the message I'm going to be getting in front of them is X, Y, Z, okay? Now, can you see straight away how the message that you're putting out is going to be different depending on who you're trying to put it to? right? Because not every client's needs are the same, are they? And it's when we're tapping into those needs and requirements and wants and desires um, in our messaging that we then start to have people take notice of us, okay? And only after we've worked those out, then we consider what media is the best one to use, okay? And by media, another word for that is marketing channel, okay? Let me give you an example. If you're trying to get your message in front of an 18 year old, then maybe TikTok or Snapchat are the best way to get in front of them, right? Maybe that's where those 18 year olds are hanging out. If you're trying to get in front of that 18 year old's mum, maybe Facebook is the best place for her. And if you're trying to get in front of her mum, trying to get in front of Gran, then I don't know, maybe the notice board at the post office is the best place to go or the classified in the local newspaper. Can you see how it's so important that we understand who we're trying to contact first and what the message is before we even consider where we're going to put it out? And this is so important because so many people do it the wrong way around. They, they look at their diary and they say, oh, a bit quiet this week. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I'll run a Facebook ad. And that's the wrong way around because it's not until you've worked out who you're trying to target and what the message is that you can then finally ascertain the best way to get in front of them. Does that make sense? Say yet, yeah, type yes, Ryan, if that makes sense, just so I understand that everyone is with me here, okay? Uh, because as I say, this could, should really, uh, this should kind of envelope everything um, that you do when it comes to marketing, right? Okay, excellent, people are saying yes, so that's a good start. Bad. Right, okay, in that case, uh, let's continue. So I just wanna pay notion to this. My favorite type of marketing is what is direct response 
marketing. And this is exactly what I recommend everyone else does as well. And indeed, uh, what I'm going to talk about today, the three types that you can try, they all tap into this. OK, and direct response marketing um, is a type of marketing designed to elicit an instant response by encouraging prospects to take a specific action right what does that mean right what does that mean okay what that means is it means that you put a specific call to action in your marketing which means you can then directly attribute your sales to it okay so for example it means that you know how you see sometimes little promo codes don't you right promo codes the point of a promo code is that it's then trackable for the company that have done that. They know exactly where their sales are coming from. And for any local businesses, this is what you should be doing, right? Leave the brand awareness stuff to Coca-Cola, right? They can afford to just pump billions of pounds into blanket advertising, not knowing which advert works and which one doesn't. Local businesses cannot do that. It's too expensive. You've got to be able to measure what's working and what isn't, right? Makes sense? I hope for that makes sense as well, okay? So you've got to be able to track your results, right? So that you can understand what is really working because if it works, you can do more of it. And if it doesn't work, you can pull the plug on it and never do it again. But if you're in the dark, not knowing what works and what doesn't, then there's a problem, right? You want to be able to attribute your sales to your specific marketing promotions guys and it is as simple in many instances as just adding a promo code right make someone quote this given quote uh, this given code and then you can tally that up right it's not it's not rocket science it's, it's not difficult to do um but then it means that you can stop doing what doesn't work and more to the point you can do more of what does okay right so Let's get cracking. And thank you for listening to that. That was just the first bit, right? That is just kind of to encapsulate what we're going to talk about so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, but I want to go through now with you three ways which to promote yourself, which are not, not social media. Are you excited for this? I hope so. Let me know. Put a comment if you are excited for this. Hands up emoji is my favorite emoji. I don't know about yours. So feel free to hit me up with one of those because we're going to get into some good stuff. If you haven't already done so, I would thoroughly recommend that you go and grab yourself a pen and a bit of paper, right? Because you are going to want to take some notes if you've not already taken some. Because by the way, you might want to watch back if you didn't scribble down your notes in that first bit because I promise you some of the stuff we've just covered there could absolutely revolutionize how you do your marketing because when you really know what works and what doesn't, it means you can make better decisions moving forward, right? And the quality of your life and the quality of your business is going to be determined by the quality of the decisions that you make, okay? This information lets you make better decisions. It's so important, so important. Oh, goodness me, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have, to have a drink. It's so important, right? All right, enough of that. Let's get going. Right, three ways to promote yourself, which are not, I repeat, not social media. The first one is email, right? Email. Um, email gets a bad rap, doesn't it, sometimes? Because you see these things, oh, email's dead. No one opens emails at all. Rubbish, absolute codswallop, it's nonsense. And if you saw actually earlier in the summer, uh, the good folks of Professional Beauty asked me to come on and do a presentation all about this. You can probably go back and see that in their video vault somewhere. But I did just want to touch on it again today because it's so important. And I'll tell you why it's important. It's important because most people do it wrong. OK, most people get it wrong. And I've lost count of the number of emails I've had from people who have said, do you know what, Ryan, I tried it your way and it worked. And I've got my open rates have gone up. I've got more sales. I've got better relationships with my clients. OK, so if you're still doing it the old way, which I'm going to show you in a minute, then um, maybe it's time to make a bit of a change so you can change something up and you can start to get some different results. OK, does that sound good? Excellent. Right. OK. Also, the other reason why I'm so passionate about email is when we still owned our day spot and salon, email was our number one source of filling our diaries, the number one source, right? And we ran Facebook ads, we ran Google pay-per-click ads, right? We did a lot of different advertising and a lot of marketing. Email 
outdid everything and it's free it's free to do right i mean for goodness sake it doesn't get better than free does it so my five top tips for sending email okay uh, most people as i say not making the most of this so this could be a really big win area for you okay number one and this is don't miss this right write this down in big letters uh send plain text emails not flashy newsletters right not flashy newsletters if you have read my book uh, I dedicate an entire chapter to my hatred um, of newsletters. And if you want a copy, by the way, put a comment saying, give me your book, Ryan, or something like that and tag me and I'll, I'll let you know how you can get a copy of it uh, without paying for it, okay? Um, I talk a lot in there about newsletters and my hatred of them. You're much better off sending plain text emails, okay? Why? Because people understand that a newsletter is a thinly veiled attempt to sell you something, okay? When you get that flashy, you know, with all images, all singing, all dancing email through on your email from Boohoo or someone, right? You know that ultimately the long and short of that email is to try and sell you something, okay? That is the sole purpose of that email. People are switched onto it and it gets worse, okay? Because spam filters know what a newsletter is and they know that people don't like them. So half of them just don't even get delivered in the first place, okay? You can get around that problem by sending plain text emails, like the sort of emails that you would send to your friend or your nan, if your nan is on email. Big up to all the nans out there, right? Um, what does that mean? It means changing the sentence structure of how you send them. The email might only be a paragraph long. If you're on our list, you'll see that we often send emails that are like two or three lines long. And they are written as if it's one person writing to one person, right? Can't stress that enough. None of this dear all, none of this dear subscriber, none of that nonsense, okay? Make someone feel like it's been written just for them. And you know that when you've cracked this, by the way, because people start to reply. No one's gonna to reply to your newsletter, or not many people will. When you are writing a plain text email, people reply. And that then gives you an opportunity to create a bond, right? Strengthen the bond, strengthen the relationship, because that's what you want, isn't it? You want better relationships with people because you can then nurture them and then they're going to get to know you better. They're going to get to like you. They're going to warm to you. And at that point, somewhere down the line, they're going to be more inclined to use your services. OK, and I promise you, you can take someone from cold and never, ever heard of you to loving you and can't give you their credit card fast enough using email. I promise you, because we've done it time and time and time and time again. But you're not going to do that by sending newsletter type emails, right? And additionally, a lot of people say to me, oh, Ryan, I don't know what to type. I don't know what to put in my emails, right? I hear that all the time. One of the keys to this is not making them all about your business, right? Not only should you not be selling on them all the time, but moreover than that, you also shouldn't make them all about your business, right? People want to know the person behind the business, okay? So give them some of that, okay? There's no problem in talking about you as an individual and what's going on in your life, right? People are nosy. They're so nosy. That's why social media is a thing, right? Social media is a thing because everyone's so flipping nosy. They want to see what everyone else is up to, right? That's the whole basis for social media. So we know that. So we can play into that by telling a little bit more about us and our story and what's going on, uh, not just about the business, right? The next thing you want to be doing as well is adding value, okay? Adding value without asking for anything in exchange, right? Everyone who is watching this video right now should be able to do a top five tips about whatever your speciality is, right? Top five tips of looking after your hair in the autumn. Top five skincare tips for winter. Every one of you should be able to write something of that ilk. You should be able to write lots of it, right? Because you're a, an expert, you're a professional, okay? So you should be able to do that. Just sending that out to your clients and not asking for anything in return, you will be amazed at the response that you get to something like that, okay? It's building relationships. 
That's what this is all about, okay? Letting people know you better, building a relationship with them, and it's so easily done on email, but not if you're sending newsletters, right? Have I said, don't send newsletters enough? I feel like I've not mentioned that enough. Um, and <laughs> send more, send more of them, okay? Send more. What we found is we found, uh, when we still had our spa, that the more emails we sent, the more sales we made. Crazy, right? But there was a positive correlation between the two. And we tested it, right? Because to start with, we were doing like an email every six weeks or something. And then we were like, maybe we should do a monthly one because everyone's saying do a monthly one, right? So we did a monthly one. And then we thought, I wonder what would happen if we sent an email every two weeks. So we did that and we got better responses, better open rates, more sales. Hmm, what happens if we do it once a week? Oh, can you believe it? It goes up even further, right? Even better open rates, even more sales, more people replying, more relationships being formed, people starting to say when they come in, oh, I like your emails, right? What then? How far can we push it? And we tested it and tested it and tested it. And we found the sweet spot to be two, two, two a week, right? However, I know that some of you are probably going, two a week, I only send one a month and I don't know what to write as it is, right? So maybe just aim for a bit more frequently than you do now, right? Because that's an easy, that's an easy step, isn't it? Be a bit more frequent than what you are now. I would recommend you aim for one a week, okay? And remember, you're not selling anything in these emails, right? So it should mean that you've got lots more content that you can share, okay? Do you believe that this is an area where you could do more this week? This week, send one as soon as we finish, right? Send one straight after we finish, okay? A plain text email to your clients just saying, hiya, just checking in with you. How's everything going? Is there anything that we can help you with at the moment? See what happens, right? I bet you get some people respond saying, oh my God, it's funny actually, because I was thinking about you just last week. I really need my highlights done or whatever it might be, okay? I promise you, I promise you, if you send that out, you will get some response, okay? Has that been helpful? Has that been helpful? Let me know, because I'm already running out of time. I'm already gonna go way over my looks of things. Sorry. Uh, anyway, that's gonna happen. So let me know if that's been helpful in the comments. Say yes, Ryan, yes, Ryan, if that's been good. And if you've got any questions about that and you're watching this live, then leave those in the comments as well because we will cover them at the end. Amanda will scoop those up. Number two, the second thing that you could try, uh, which again is nothing to do with social media, um, and that is a leaflet campaign, right? Leaflet drops, old school. Yeah, they're old school, but guess what? They work, okay? I don't know about you, but where I live, I get at least, at least one leaflet from Domino's Pizza through my door every single week without fail. Some weeks I get two. What a treat, okay? So it happens all the time, right? But for some reason, a lot of people think, oh, that's a bit old school. No, no I don't wanna do that. I wanna, I wanna be online. It's all gotta be online, gotta be online, right? It doesn't have to all be online, okay? In fact, going offline is a super, super smart strategy, not least because less people are doing it, okay? And that means your message is more likely to get read, more message likely to get heard, okay? So let's have a little look then at my top five tips for sending better leaflets, because here's the other key, right? If you've got a rubbish leaflet right out the gate, <laughs> it's not gonna work. OK, it's not going to work. If you're sending out the wrong thing, remember we said right at the start, remember, uh, market message media. If your message is wrong, it doesn't matter who gets that leaflet. You're not going to have a good response. OK, that doesn't mean distributing leaflets doesn't work. It means your leaflet wasn't very good. All right. So at least we've learned something there. OK, um, and super top tip, by the way, before we even start, please, please. Don't just send out your price list, right? Don't just send your price list. That is not a leaflet, that is a price list. Uh, that's just gonna go straight in the recycling, I'm afraid. And that doesn't help anyone, um, okay? So don't do that, right? And also, the other thing not to do, don't do it on the thinnest possible <laughs> paper that you can get from the printers, right? Invest a little bit more and have it slightly thicker, okay? Because otherwise, what is the message that you are saying when 
that goes through that door, right? It's saying we're cheap, isn't it? It's saying we are a cheap business. We're trying to cut every corner possible. And if that's the market you're going for, like the bottom end of the market, then I guess that's okay. But personally, I'd recommend going to the other end of the market because that's where the money is and there's less competition, right? So what would be the impact? And here's a good example, actually. We get them through from estate agents where we are all the time. Some of them super cheap. Some of them come through almost like card and like really high quality. And you think, hmm, that would be the company I would want to be representing me if I was selling my house, right? So think about the messages that you're giving out. So number one, most important thing you can do is a strong headline which calls out your dream client, okay? And this is something that just no one does. And it's absolutely essential to having success because the first thing everyone's going to do is they're going to pick it up and they're going to read whatever it says at the top. That wants to be calling out your dream client, okay? So, for example, um, whoever your client is and whatever your main you know, service that you're looking to promote is, you want to be having that in a headline right at the top of your leaflet, okay? If, for example, you're going after people who, let's say you've got a new cryolipolysis machine, right, and you're going after fat freezing clients, you would want a headline which is, you know, calling those people out, okay? So straight away you get their attention because otherwise someone looks at it and if it's just a load of prices, they just go, oh, it's not for me, and it goes in the bin, right? You've got to grab their attention. You've at least got to make them read the rest of what's on there, okay? And the way that you do that primarily is with a strong headline, okay? You also want to make sure that you're adding value and not discounting, okay? Because again, especially if this is people you don't know in your local area, you want to give them a reason to contact you, yeah? Give them a reason to contact you. Um, don't put on their 10% off with this flyer, 10% off, right? Because that's boring, so boring. No one wants 10% off, especially when they don't know you. They don't understand what that even represents, okay? So instead, think about how you could add value, right? If you come in with this flyer and take service X, then you will get service Y included or whatever it might be, okay? Make sure you run the numbers first, okay? But this then means that you're giving people a reason to take action. But as I say, you're not going to get someone over the line with 10% off or even 20% off. It's a, it's a meaningless number if someone doesn't know you. OK, so don't do that. You also want to make sure you use a specific promo code. So this is what we said right at the top of the call. OK, if I were doing a leaflet campaign tomorrow, I'll tell you what I would do. I would map them all out. In fact, I would do two different ones, right? I would have a headline on one and I'd have a different headline on the other. They would have different promo codes and I would send them out off into the local area and I would see which one comes back more of, yeah? Does promo code A, have I got more of those or have I got more of promo code B? Does that make sense? And then you can see which headline worked the best, right? And then you can try and beat it again. Or then you might want to try adjusting the colors. And you can just continually, continually, continually improve on your messaging, okay? But it's really important that you have these codes because otherwise, what happens? You can't rely on the client to say, oh, I've received a leaflet from you because they're just not going to do that, are they? They're probably just going to go on your website and book something, right? So it's really important that you either have a designated code which they have to quote to get whatever the um, promotion is, or you say you've got to bring the leaflet with you when you come in and then you can see it for yourself, right? But otherwise, if you're just sending it out, a generic one go, going out, how the heck are you going to know if it's been good or not, if it's been well received? If you've not got any way of tracking it, you're not going to have a clue. And by the way, that is exactly what happens when people do marketing, which is not direct response marketing, which we spoke about at the top of the call, right? Because you're just putting stuff out there and hoping some of it sticks. That's not scalable. It's not measurable. How on earth do you know what's working and what doesn't? You can't make proper business decisions based on that information, okay? You also want to use one very clear call to action, okay? What's the one thing you want them to do? Put that on there. Don't put on there, oh, you can get our Insta here, our Facebook here, you can go to the website here, you can phone us here, you can DDM us here, you can do this there. Don't do that. 
because it confuses the client, right? Think about how you want them to contact you, put that on there, right? And please, if it's a telephone number that you're putting on there, make sure you've got an out of hours, uh, some sort of way of taking that because you don't want to encourage people to be phoning you when you're not there uh, and you just lose it all, okay? Uh, the fifth time about, and this is really, really uh, a good one. Um, it's worth noting that this works best when repeated, okay? Too many people give up after doing one leaflet job. Whereas actually the real rewards come when you've done two or three or four or five or six over a period of time. Now, you might wanna change those leaflets, right? But you wanna keep hitting the same people with them because it's gonna take, for some people, seeing it more than once for them to take action. Imagine if you are doing, let's say uh, you're a hair, hair salon and someone has just had their hair done literally this morning and your leaflet lands on the mat. It does not matter how well designed, written or anything that leaflet is with all the will in the world. Nobody is going to phone up and book in if they've had their hair done that morning, are they? And what's going to happen over the next six weeks? They're going to lose that leaflet. So that's why it's important that another one comes through their door, right? because it's gonna build on it. It's gonna build and build and build so that they start to recognize your names, okay? Really, really important that. When did you last try it? Let me ask you that. When did you last try this? Did it work, right? Because this is the other funny thing. Often I speak to people and they say, yeah, I did that once. It was really good actually, it worked really well. Oh yeah, have you done it since? Oh no, I haven't actually. Why not? Why not if something works? Repeat it, right? Bonkers. Okay, the third thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to speed up a bit, and I'm sorry, everyone, uh, uh, for taking a bit long. Let's do number three, right? And this is a biggie, guys. This is a biggie. Get your pen and paper out. Sharpen that pencil, right? Collaboration. Oh, who does this? Not enough people do this, and it can be super, super, super powerful, right? Five steps to take to get some collaboration going, okay? Number one, step number one is you wanna think of at least 10 non-competing local businesses who serve the same market that you do, okay? Non-competing local businesses. So if you are hair and you don't do beauty, go and find some beauty people, right? If you're a nail bar and you don't do anything else, then go after hair businesses, beauty businesses, right? Jewelers. Um, local shops, wedding suppliers, could be anything. The key here is what you are looking for are people who serve the same people that you do. If you are a vegan salon, I would be straight on the phone to all the health food shops and the vegan restaurants because the people that they have a relationship with at the moment and the people that they are serving and the people that are listening to them and tuned into their messaging are the same people that you want to tune into and listen to, right? It's the same person. So can you, can you see where this is going here? Can you see how super smart this is? Because someone else has already got a relationship with every client you could ever need, right? Makes sense, it's making sense, but yes, if this is making sense, I hope so, because I'm hoping this is gonna be a few penny drop moments here. And in the same way, you've already got a relationship and a, a base with, the dream clients of somebody else. And assuming that you two aren't in competition with one another, why couldn't you help each other out? Well, you can, that's a good thing about this, right? But they've got to be non-competing, right? Got to be non-competing, okay? Who serve the same market as you, right? Reach out to all of them, okay? And the best way to reach out to someone if you want to start up a business relationship with them is in person, right? Go into their business. If you can't do that, pick up the telephone. Don't do a private message on Instagram or something, right? Because everyone gets hundreds of those every day and they just look like spam. You're not gonna get someone's attention as well that way. Do something different, right? Make yourself stand out. If you really want them to take attention, send them a card in the post, right? Find out the name of the owner of the business, send them something in the post. They will open that, okay? Especially if it's a nice brightly colored envelope, right? They're probably gonna open that, aren't they? You would, so they probably would, okay? So reach out to all of them. And the reason why you need to reach out to about 10 is because out of 10, you might get one good one, right? Out of 10, you might get one good one, okay? You will get seven uh, time wasters, two that you think will be good but won't actually do anything, and one that will be half decent and you might be able to work with, okay? 
Next thing you need to do is work out how you can do something mutually beneficial for your clients, right? Mutually beneficial. It's got to work for you and it's got to work for them. And you've both got to be in it together and you've both got to agree. I'll promote it to my people. You promote it to your people. Let's see if we can make something special happen here. Okay. This is why it's so important that you find a business who is a good fit for you. Right. Um, and then you want to think what would benefit the client the most? Because really you need to have this set up as a win, win, win. It's got to be a win for you. It's got to be a win for the other business owner. And it's also got to be a win for the client what would be irresistible to the client okay and again let's think about it put yourself in the client's shoes again i'm going to use the example of a vegan salon hair or beauty right if you got contacted by your vegan salon they would say oh my god we've just done this little co-promotion now with the local vegan restaurant at the road and if you go in there after you've had a haircut with us then you're going to get X, Y, Z. You're going to get a free glass of wine, vegan wine, right? Whatever it might be, okay? But it's an unusual way in. It's going to get people's attention. And if it's set up so that everyone wins, then it's going to be popular as well. And really the key to this is thinking outside the box, okay? You have to think, and again, this goes back to knowing your customers. You've got to think about what would my client want? What are their needs? What are their wants? What are their desires? What are their pain points? How can I help them? How can these other people help them? How can we all work on this together, right? Um, social media, guys, is great, okay? I'm not saying social media isn't great, but the point is, it's not the only way, okay? Um, and also, please, don't put your eggs all in one basket, right? If you are putting everything that you've got into Facebook or into Instagram, that is a really, 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 really dangerous strategy, not least because you don't own the platform. You don't own that traffic. What happens if tomorrow the Instagram algorithm changes or your account gets shut down? And don't think that doesn't happen to people because it does. You can lose a business overnight. It's so important that you are collecting the data on your own platform that you control, okay? I.e. your own databases, right? It's so important because otherwise the rug can be pulled out from under you in a moment's notice, right? What happens if tomorrow Facebook say you've got to pay to post every time you want to post on Facebook? I don't think that might not happen one day because it might, okay? So you've got to be prepared. But also... What would happen if you put all of this together? What would happen if you got together with a local business who's with you? What happened if then you put like a special package together between all of you, that then you did a leaflet drop in the local area talking about that. You then send an email campaign to all of the different businesses, clients, telling everyone about it. And you're also all posting about it on your socials as well. Do you think that might get the attention of some of the clients who you're trying to attract? Because I think it would. And actually, when you're then coming at them from all different angles, they can't fail to notice you. And then you're going to be half a chance, right? You're going to have a half a chance because marketing is all about getting people's attention and getting your message in front of them. And these ways are a great way to do that. That is when the magic really, really happens. Woo! Look, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed. We're going to do some Q&A now, I think. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, and I think Amanda's going to come back on and we're going to see if there have been any questions. Hello, Ryan. That was Hello. brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, You're very welcome. We've had loads of questions and a big outpouring of love for you on social. Oh, just thought yeah. I'd let you know. Uh, the Salonology <laughs> tribe is out in full force. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we've had a few questions and obviously anybody who's watching, there's still time to post questions into the comment box and we will get through as many of these with Ryan yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amanda Major has asked, how do you attract the right clientele to your business? <laughs> well, good, good question. I think that the first uh, point, uh, Amanda, for that is, is knowing who that client is because most people don't actually have a a really, really clear idea of exactly who it is they want to attract. Mm. A lot of times if you speak to people, you say, oh, who's your dream client? And they'll say, oh, it's women between 18 and 60 who live within 10 miles of my salon. And you think that's not really specific enough. 
Mm. And if you don't know who you're really going after, then you're just going to attract all sorts, right? So step one is actually working out specifically who you are trying to target. And then the next step, as we spoke about right at the top of the presentation, is working out what message they need to hear. Mm. What is the message that is going to resonate with them that is going to make them listen to what you are saying? And the way that you find that out is you need to dig deep on who you're who you're trying to contact or who you're, trying to, who you're trying to serve. What is it that they're struggling with? How can you help them? And when you know those things and you talk in that language, then you're going to find that those people um, resonate towards you more. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Sarah Martins asked about what platforms you would recommend to send emails. Um, yeah, good question. Uh, well, we use a program which is called ConvertKit. Um, however, you could use MailChimp if you wanted, that's free. Uh, so is ConvertKit free if you've got less than like a thousand people. So either of those are fine. There's, uh, there's plenty of good ones out there. You don't need to invest hundreds and hundreds of pounds, mm -hmm. um, but you do need to use something because if you're currently sending out emails to your list and you're just using like Hotmail or Gmail or something like that, mm -hmm. then you kind of open up a little <laughs> bit of a GDPR can of worms there because <laughs> you need to have an unsubscribe link on your email. Mm -hmm. uh, and also doesn't look very professional coming from a Gmail address, I wouldn't have said. Mm. And actually, just on the thing you said about privacy, this um, kind of taps into a question from Lily Samara. And uh -huh. um, she's asked, would you have any issues regarding data privacy if I suddenly started sending emails to clients? I've never done emails before, but really like the idea and would like to try it. OK, so two things there. Firstly, if you've got that, you do need their consent to send them an email. So what I would recommend that people do is they include that on their consultation forms. So that was what we did. We used to have a tick box on the consultation form. Are you happy to receive uh, emails and marketing communications from us? OK, and about 50 percent of people ticked yes. So straight away, you can kind of grow your audience quite quickly. The other way that you can do that as well is having something on your website that's going to collect people's information and then they just opt in like you see on most websites. Mm. So that's a good way that you can do that as well. One thing that we used to do again in our spies, we used to run a competition every month and people had to opt into the competition. And then, of course, they stayed on our list. Right. And and whilst they could opt off if they wanted, most of them chose not to. Um, and that way we grew, we grew a list of 9,000 local people that way over several wow. years. And that yeah. was hugely better. The power of that is, is, is immense really. So you can do that, but to answer the question, to loop back, if it doesn't have that, if it doesn't have that consent, then yeah, legally it's going to be quite difficult um, to contact them. I guess the only other way that you could do it would be to reach out and then send people a link so that they can then opt in. So I guess they could send a friendly personal email one to one and say, you know, would you now be interested? But again, even that's probably slightly dodgy ground from a legal perspective. Mm. Um, you, nowadays, yeah. you do need people's consent and some people, some people don't care, but some people do. Yeah. And um, we've had a couple of similar questions about leaflet drops, in particular about targeted leaflet drops. So oh, yeah. questions came from Rosie and from Karen um, and they've asked, what's your thoughts on targeted leaflet drops? And also, is there a way to find out where your ideal clients are possibly staying like postcodes or et cetera, so that you can deliver targeted um, leaflet yeah, drops? Yeah. Yeah, great, great question. And yes, absolutely. If you speak with, I mean, when I'm talking about doing the, the drops, I, I wouldn't do it myself. I'd pay a company to do it. So if you like Google it in your local area, there will be, I mean, you've got actually, you've got multiple options. You have some companies who send them out um, and their little team go out and they put like three or four through your door at once, you know, mixed in with other companies. Mm. You have other ones that go out with like the freebie local newspapers in your area. They normally have a few stuffed in there so they could distribute it for you. Or you can speak to Royal Mail and they will do it for you. They are the most expensive by some considerable margin, but they also have the most information on 
your clients, right? Mm. So, or option four, the free option is that you, um, you know, get a child to do it for you. you employ, <laughs> employ your son or daughter and their friends and bribe them with something mm. and get them to go and do it. Um, but in terms of can you target them? Yes, you can. And what I would do, again, this, this goes back to knowing your customer, Amanda. So, you know, it, you should know what areas your best customers live in. And if you don't know, ask them. You know, I mean, you've got their client data anyway, right? So you should be able to, most software, booking softwares, will be able to give you a list of your top 20, 50, 100 clients, right? The people that have spent the most with you in the last year, for example. All you've got to do is download that and start looking through it and look for the patterns. Mm. You will probably find quite quickly that there are a few areas where those people are congregating. And then, yes, you can go and hit those areas. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Ryan. And um, we've also had a question from Andrea, and she's asking about what kind of headlines would work best for flyers. I mean, she has a waxing salon, so I think she's asking a little bit specifically for her, but it would be good to know what kind of things people should be looking to put on these flyers. Yeah, of course. Well, as I say, the, the, one of the things that you often see where people go wrong, and actually this is a real simple tip, actually, that anyone can do, if you're thinking about doing some flyers, right? Everyone gets them through their door every week, don't they? So mm -hmm. when you start getting them through, start looking at them and trying to think, would I continue to read that or not? Okay. And actually, if you if the answer is yes, then ask yourself, why? What is it that's good about that leaflet that has made me want to continue reading it? Or what is terrible about it? Like as I mentioned during the presentation, now one of the big mistakes people make is they just send out their price list. And a price list, whilst being important, that isn't the job of a price list. You know, mm -hmm. that's got a very, very different function. And indeed, what I would be, what all you're trying to do is you're trying to call out people who might be interested in what you do. So again, for, um, sorry, I forgot the name of the lady who you said <laughs> asked the question. Um, it was Andrea. Andrea, okay. So for Andrea, then I guess she needs to really think about who it is that she wants to attract. What message do those people need to hear to in order for them to contact her, okay? So by that, what I mean is she must know what some of the main concerns are for people that are waxing. Maybe they've been somewhere else and they had a bad experience. Maybe mm -hmm. they have been somewhere else and you know it's not the right environment for them. Maybe they've never done it, right? And so she needs to think about what these either pain points or concerns are or what's really going through their head and try and tap into that in some way. And you should already know some of those things as a business owner. And if you don't, then ask your clients, you know, why do you come to me? Why don't you go to that place down the road, for example? And then you're literally just trying to make, the, the job of the headline is to make them read the rest of it. Mm. And that is it. So yeah. this is why often you get like sensationalist headlines, you know, mm, yeah. because then it stops you in your tracks, doesn't it? And you're yeah. like, well, I've got to read the rest of this. This, is, this looks important. Whereas if it's just like your logo at the top and your phone number, that's going straight in the bin. <laughs> um, just before I ask you some more questions, right? We just had a couple of people who've come into this live late. As soon as this live is over, you can watch it from the start again on PB's Facebook page. It'll sit there indefinitely. And we'll also be putting it on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So don't worry, you can watch Ryan's presentation from the start that content will be there. Um, we've also had a question from Rosie Frazier and she's asked about the best way to open a second salon in a different area in terms of marketing and social media marketing. Okay, uh, hi Rosie. Um, yeah, I mean, that's quite a big question. Um, but I mean, personally, I would be treating it pretty much as a new, a new business because if you're gonna be in a completely different area altogether, uh, I don't know if the services that they're going to be offering are going to be the same, but I would personally be treating it as a brand new business. So I would normally recommend that you have its own, and she said about socials, I would have my own socials pages. So mm -hmm. because otherwise you lose all of the advantages of the, uh, of the uh, geographical side of things. You want people who are close to both of them to be able to flag up on Google and stuff. You need to register your own Google My Business page. You need to get ranked for all those things. I would also go and speak to the local press and get them to run a feature on it because someone, particularly now, someone opening and expanding and opening a second business is like quite a big deal. 
and it's the sort of story that a local paper would would pick up and probably report on for their business section. So I would definitely do that. I would also do, I mean, I would still do a large targeted campaign to my existing clients because your new location might be more convenient for them than mm. the existing one. But typically speaking, as I say, it would be do the things that worked when you opened your first salon because a lot of it is going to be the same and really it would be treated, I say, I would recommend treating it as a, a new entity entirely. And again, leaflets, brilliant way to do that, because the first thing I would do would be to go and leaflet drop everywhere within like a couple of mile radius of where your new premises are. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, I would do one probably before you're even in there saying it's on its way. And then another one when you open, um, if uh, restrictions allow, depending on where you are and depending where the state of things are when you actually swing your doors open. I would also invite local people to come along to a launch event of some description. And I would also, I would also invite local business owners as well, especially if you're in a little parade of shops, go and buddy up with all those people because it's worth knowing them. You don't know where yeah. those relationships might go. Maybe you can work with them. Yeah. Um, Rosie said, great, thank you. That was really helpful, which is brilliant. Um, we had a question from Paul Mills and he was asking about what message did you find worked best when doing promo codes? Um, well, the, the, what message worked best? Yeah. Well, the, um, the, the message just needs, and again, this is true across all marketing, the message needs to be the message that your client needs to hear. So typically the best ones are gonna be ones whereby your dream target client looks at it, reads it and goes, oh my God, that's for me. Almost as if it was only written for them and it couldn't possibly be for anyone else because you also want to discount people who aren't your right client, okay? So it doesn't matter if you, it doesn't matter if they put it straight in the bin because they're not gonna be your client anyway. The point is you're trying to make the people who are a good fit come forward and stand up. So I'm not sure if that answers Paul's question or not, um, or if he means in terms of the actual physical code, the actual physical code can be any, any metric you like that you can then track. And I'd recommend you set up like a Google sheet or an Excel spreadsheet and you track all the codes, where they've come from, what the code was. If you wanna get really geeky on it, then you would have a screen grab of the actual leaflet so that you can test it and track it and trace it because as I say, you know, we get where I live, I get at least one Domino's leaflet through my door every week, at least one Papa John's one mm. every week. Sometimes they're slightly different. I know full well that a company of that size wouldn't be doing it if they weren't working. And I'm pretty sure Domino's share price is like doubled this year. So <laughs> they're obviously doing something right. Yeah. Um, Ryan, they're all the questions that we have. Um, there was one other question. Well, it came through from lots of different people. Lots of people asking how they can get their hands on your book. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. questions about the book. <laughs> they, can get, they can get my hands on my book. Oh, quick, quick plug. Yes, my book. This, this book, you mean, Amanda? Yeah, that it's book. book. <laughs> um, they can get hold of it. I will put a link. In fact, they can do better than that. They can get it for free. If you just pay the postage, I'll send the book out for nothing. It is a real proper oh, paperback book. I've got a big stack of them in my office. I'm happy to send out. So what I will do, I'll... I'll um, I'll put the link in the comments on the various Facebook feeds. Oh, brilliant. And if everyone, if anyone wants to do that, then I'd be delighted to. I can actually put it in Zoom right now, I think. Yeah, that'd be great, Brian. Because, yeah, so anybody who's watching um, Professional Beauty, Hairdressers Journal, and PB and HJ Island, um, Ryan's going to put that in once we finish this live webinar. So if you do want to get hold of his book, as long as you're happy to pay for the postage, he is happy to send it out, um, which yes. is brilliant. And he's just posted it in Zoom as well for the people who are watching on Zoom. So make sure that you click on that link. But Ryan, this has been brilliant. So helpful. I mean, honestly, people, it's been an outpouring of love, honestly, um, across the channels for you. And people have found it really, really helpful. And again, as I said, everybody, if you missed the start, you can go back and watch it. It's going to be available as soon as we end this. And Ryan did mention earlier as well that he's done another webinar with us before on email marketing, a real in-depth look at that topic. And it was really good. And that is on PB's YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube, put in professional beauty, Ryan Power, email marketing, it will come up straight away. Um, but yeah, 
Thank you so much, Ryan. This is all we have time for, but we really appreciate you coming on today. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. And again, if anybody does have any other questions for Ryan, if you put them on Facebook, we will be monitoring that and we'll put any of these to him. He's going to try and answer some of them for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Have a lovely day. And thank you, everybody, for joining the webinar today. See you later. Everyone, bye. bye.